Hi, Leroy. This is John calling from Washington State. My family and I were hoping to get out there for a vacation to Maine this summer, but with the pandemic, we couldn't uh, justify traveling right now. We were really hoping to see uh, the touch tank. We were wondering if you uh, wouldn't mind making a video segment showing us uh, a little bit about the touch tank and the, the critters in there. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. This is episode 22, and this is the Maine Center for Coastal Fisheries in Stonington, Maine, and I'm in the Discovery Wharf section of it. And we have a live tank in here with live specimens. We have had a great time with folks from all over the country. The specimens that we have in here are all brought in by the local fishermen. A couple of years ago, we had a blue lobster, orange and black lobster, and then we had one that was spotted. If you can't make it to our area, we understand because of the pandemic that's going around. So if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. We're gonna start our program here today with a live sea scallop. You can see the baleen up here to the top, on the top shelf. They filter the plankton in the water through that to feed. And in the back in here should be the white mussel. And that is the part that we eat. That's the that's what we would call the scallop, probably what you're familiar with seeing on your plate. Now, around the edge of the shell, at top and bottom, you see the little black dots, and those are the scallop's eyes. He has 100 eyes, top and bottom. This is the bottom, the flat shell. They have no legs, so they move with a taking in water and moving the shell up and down. And if you look at the bottom, you will see these rings on the shell, and it looks like uh, growth rings on a tree. So you can count the rings to see how old the scallop is. We've, we figure this one's about nine years old. So that's a scallop. Okay, and then we have in here a hermit crab. Now, these little fellas are kind of the housekeepers of the ocean, you might call them. They go around and they eat all kinds of things on bottom, waste products from fish. And if I was to pull him out, I won't because they got a soft belly on the back end of them. And as they grow, they grow, the shell gets too tight for them. They will pick up another shell of somebody that has died and they will use that for their home. So this is kind of their home. To, the shell protects them actually. This is a small starfish. These can grow up to eight, 10 inches across. Uh, they come in array of colors. They can be purple, they can be orange, they can, some of them are green. They're all different colors. Let's see what else, we got a rock crab here. Oh, this one ain't got any bands on. <laughs> a bit example, he don't get a hold of me. This is a stone crab, rock crab, or a Jonah crab, whichever you want to call them. They're pretty docile, they don't, they don't get too excited about anything. They don't care if school keeps or not, even when they come up in the trap, when you first pull them out of the water. However, these claws can give you a pretty nasty bite. If he hooks onto your finger, you're gonna use some words you ain't used in a long time. And you'll probably be down on your knees down there on the floor trying to get him off. These are near as aggressive as the sand crabs or the peaky toe. They, them fellas will make you swear before you even get to the floor. They're very strong. This is a hard shell. The meat in these is a little coarser than the Maryland blue crab or what we not have known here as a peaky toe or sand crab. Their meat is a little more delicate, is finer, but however, one tastes as good as the other. Now we're gonna move on to the lobsters. Hey, cut out. Hey, now you listen. We've been through this once this morning already. Pay attention. <laughs> this is the male. The male's tail is narrow and it also comes up like this instead of being hollowed out because obviously he doesn't carry eggs under his tail. We have two different claws. This claw is the power claw. You can see, note the round 
teeth in here. This one has the sharp pointed teeth like needles. And they're the ones that do the damage if they get a hold of your flesh. He's not equipped with a radio, but he does have antennas. These are his eyes, you might say, when it's, he's in real deep water. They go 360, they go out front, they go to the side, and they go to the rear. They're very, very sensitive when he's in the water. So they can detect if there's another animal getting behind him, alongside him, or whatever. And if it's a bigger than he is, he'll just move off. Oh, well, you want to see, Steve? Yeah, I don't think I got a great shot. How about I take mine out and give him mine for the day? <laughs> he's got three sets of teeth. He's got one right on the outside right here. Then he's got another set right there. And then he's got a set of grinders down in the bottom. That's how he grinds his food out. They are scavengers. They'll eat most anything. They eat each other. They're cannibals. Now, if I can find the female, wherever she is, this is the female. You can tell by these little whiskers right here. Okay? They're transparent and they're very flexible. You can bend them, they won't break. Can you see it? The tail is wider and it's deeper. And these little flipperettes on the tail, if you if they uh, you can see them, have like little whiskers on them. And the whiskers protect the eggs when she's crawling on bottom. Her tail is out like this, out flat. They, they go backwards this way by flipping this way if they're escaping somebody or another animal that's after them. And they, they can go fast. They can really go fast. But when they're just hunting for something to eat, they just crawl around bottom with the tail out this way. And, okay? This here is a beginning of a kelp plant can see the flat surface on it. When it was, when they brought it in, it was quite sticky. They, they have like their own glue and they stick to a stone or, or anything, in, any flat surface. And it had the leaf up here, which we cut off because it went the whole length of the tank. And this is a haven for baby mussels, as you can, look in here and through the root system here, you can see the little black muscles in there. Can you get them up? And here's one right here on the top. See them right there? The algae that you see on here was from the muscles attaching themselves to these stalks. Uh, one day, the, there's four or five hermits in here and they ganged up on this poor plant and they cleaned him. <laughs> they had lunch. And we have what we call lump fish. They grow quite big. He's very beautiful. He's blue in color, light blue. On his bottom here, on his belly, right here, he's got like a suction cup. And he will attach himself to this scallops in there or any of the shells in the tank. And he cleans the algae off the shells. It's, it's quite interesting to, to watch him. Here he goes. Now that's about what I have for you in the tank. Now if you folks are interested and you're in the area, call up, get a reservation. And there's no dumb questions. We understand that you live a long way from here and uh, we appreciate your calls. Thank you very much.